Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for high-level traders to learn valuable trends and strategies, connect with other top traders, and become consistently profitable. Click the link in the description of this video to receive a special offer on our revolutionary PS60 training, access to our daily chat room filled with experienced traders, and so much more. Space is limited, so make sure you don't miss out. We look forward to seeing you in the room. Hey guys, good morning everybody and welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Uh, great time of the year. We are about I think nine days, right? Nine days away from Christmas. Uh, I know a lot of traders are slowly but surely starting to shutting it down, uh, kind of tapering off end of the year stuff, getting their you know, last minute uh, Christmas shopping done again. All you guys out there, please do not wait till the last minute. You got to get your stuff done because it's just crazy out there. Um, but this is a great time of year. Uh, this is what life is all about: spending as much time with family, friends, loved ones, and really, you know, taking a step back and reflecting. Okay, not only on your personal life but also on your professional life. And I you know I think a lot of traders. Um, especially in the last two, three years, all they know is this really aggressive, rabid bull market. Okay, And a lot of new traders started out in this rabid bull market and really never found their footing. Okay, Just whatever reason it was, whether they uh, started out trading stocks that they weren't supposed to st start taking out or they were victims of alert service, whatever, whatever the case may be. I don't want to you know, I don't go into it. Everybody has their own uh, different way. Uh, but I, but I think when the market finally turned, and for all you guys have been following me for you know for quite a while now, especially you know on all, all these different social media platforms, whether it's Twitter or the YouTube, of course YouTube, where uh, this broadcast is going, you know where the market has been, what we've been talking about uh, for the last two and a half months, and why was two and a half months kind of significant and you know really uh, put into the forefront of a spotlight of a whole year because this is where. I believe um, the greatest amount of actual life trading, real life experience has been brought to uh, unexpectedly to a lot of traders. And when I say this to a lot of traders, I don't say to a lot of new traders, to a lot of traders in general. And when you have a, a linear market, right, a linear uh, tape that we've seen for about two and a half years, pretty much straight up. Uh, again, you can make the case, is, is Trump has anything to do with it, is it not anything to do with it, it doesn't make a difference. The scoreboard is a scoreboard. But in the last two months, two and a half months, we've seen what technical analysis, and this is where we really champion technical analysis for a long time, this is where technical analysis has really shown all traders okay, how important it is to really get your ducks in a row, especially we're getting into the new year and every single new trader is saying to themselves, new year, new me. I mean, that's the, that's the headline, but I mean, that's the slogan I see. New me, new year, new me, new year, new year, new me, right? But if you're doing the same things over and over again, you're going to get the same results. You're going to get the new year, but you're going to get the same old you. But this week, I would say, was probably the most, and again, this is not me saying it lightly. Um, I've been, it's going to be almost 20 years next May for me. Okay, um, I started trading when I was 25. I'm 44 right now, and and I said this in the live webinar throughout the week that I don't think I've seen more crazier lack of market structure, especially in the beginning of this week, uh, probably in a decade. Okay, not in a month, not in a week, probably in a decade. And you know, if you guys have been following this broadcast that we put out on the weekends. That you know, everybody knows we've been bearish, not bearish, but sell. I don't like to use the word bearish. We were, we were sell side, sell biased uh, ever since the double, you know, double top and keep on going and lower and going lower. We've been, we identified uh, the potential tradable, I don't want to call it bottoms, but tradable, um, tradable bounces into supply, tradable bounces into supply, and so forth and so on. But what made this week and what really made this week incredibly challenging, and this is where we talk about the difference between a sell bias or a sell bias without structure, this is what we saw. And, and I say this again, this was the most aggressive week, and not in a good way, most aggressive week that I could remember in the last decade. Okay, Just really just take a step back and think about that. Um, and when we talk about 
what has changed, right? What has changed? Why has the market behaved, especially in the first two, three days of last week? Why did it behave differently? Okay, what made it completely different than the first, you know, two months or so? Like what? What changed? And if you notice, everything, every update that we've been giving for the last, you know, two months or so has been, you know, pretty orderly. Well, we're in a bear market. Oh my God, don't say it's a bear market. Well, we're in a bear market. Don't say it's a bear market. Okay, call it pause, call it correction, call it what you want. Again, as I said in the last several videos, you can't put lipstick, you can put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. But something's changed. Okay, something changed. And Monday, I can honestly say I had no control of the tape. I mean, I really had no control. So why is market structure so important? First of all, what is market structure? Okay, number one, people don't use the word market structure in a bull market because, well, you just have market participants. So what's market structure? Okay, you have buyers, okay, or aggressive buyers. You have aggressive sellers, right? Buyers and sellers. That's what makes up a market. That's what makes up the highest bid and the lowest offer, right? That's the market. Okay, that's fair value. Nobody says a stock is 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 cheap. It could get cheaper. Nobody says a stock is expensive. It could get more uh, pricier. But the highest bid and the lowest offer, the last print of the day, is fair value. That's what people are willing to pay for the market. Okay, so you need buyers and sellers. Okay, uh, buyers and sellers create liquidity. Okay, liquidity is a trader's. Okay. It might not be an investor, not maybe for an investor going five, 10 years down the line, but for an investor, you need liquidity, okay? You need liquidity because again, everybody trades on different time frames. Everybody has different uh, intervals that they trade off of. Again, I trade off 60 minute channels. I try to get uh, the biggest view possible, the wider view possible, to you know, kind of omit as much noise as possible. Uh, so when you have market participants and you have liquidity, that's called market structure. Okay, so if a stock breaks out at twenty, right, it usually does go to twenty-one eventually. Okay, there's enough buyers and there's enough buying and selling over the the, you know, the breakout level. That's called building, right? It's called building a new floor, and now you're just taking steps, steps, steps higher, and the stocks go higher. When you have a market that is bear-sided or sell biased, okay. Majority of traders were, were designed mentally and again, really talked about and really um, stated over and over again that cash is a position. So if you have enough people thinking that cash is a position, what's going to happen? You're going to have less market participants. Okay. Um, you're going to have much less liquidity. Okay. And by the way, buy the dip is a bull market term. Okay, nobody buys the dip in a bear market. Nobody buys the dip in a sell buy. So how do you know? Because well, you got now Tesla trading at a dollar spread. You have Amazon some days trading at a two dollar spread. Um, you have stocks that I usually trade with a thirty cent spread, twenty cent spread, are having dollar dollar fifty spreads. So you're omitting many market participants because they're all sitting on their hands because cash is a position. And what I saw from Monday was completely the opposite of what we saw in the first two, two and a half months that we saw the market start breaking down. We knew the market was going down. It was linear. It was pretty controllable. Monday, it was none of that. And uh, when I tell you I had just the most frustrating day, and that, I think that's the key word. Um, somebody said in, in, in the live webinar, we've been doing, we've been doing uh, access to trade for about nine years now. And I think Monday was the first day, okay, and I've had losses before, and it has nothing to do with that. But Monday was one of the most frustrating days for me because I wasn't in control. And if you're a trader, and I don't care how many years you've been trading, the most important thing is to be in control. You need to control your risk. You need to uh, control your areas that you know if you're wrong, you got to get out. And what I saw Monday, I haven't seen in about 10 years. And what happened in 10 years ago? 10 years ago was the mortgage crisis, right? You had uh, people surviving, trying to survive. You had, you had banks trying to not to go to zero. You had, the you, know, you had the whole global economy not trying to collapse. So you could understand why 10 years ago, right? Or just pick any literally random day from 10 years ago, you could have lack of market structure. But what I saw on Monday was absolutely terrifying. Um, and I started the day, Tesla broke down, and it went down quickly, about a, you know, a little, little less than a dollar, but very quickly. And it started building there. So I said, all right, you know, everything's all good. Here was the problem. 
Okay, um, the spread was ridiculous, ridiculously wide. Uh, it wasn't as thin as po it was thin as, po as, as possible you can imagine. Okay, um, and in this market anyway, I've been trading quarter to half sizes, so it's not like I'm sitting there full size anyway. But it doesn't make a difference. The, the, the point of conversation doesn't make a difference. And what I saw was probably the most terrifying thing you can see. One buyer comes in because again, lack of structure, no bids, no offers. One buyer comes in and they literally spread me out a dollar at a time, right? A dollar at a time. And literally in about, I would say about a minute, um, I lost about three and a half dollars in the trade. Okay. Now it's not the point of losing three and a half dollars on, on the first trade of the day. It was the point of, oh my God, what the hell just happened? Was that even real? Okay. So I couldn't get out. So just to give you an idea, I just couldn't get out. So by the time my second trade of the same day happened, I was like, all right, you know, it's a little bit thinner. Let me, you know, let me be, let me be a little more prudent. Let me see if I can just make it back. And again, I don't revenge trade. If I have a bad day, if I have a bad trade, whatever, it is what it is. I always look at it as a business. It's, it's always a long term and you're not trying to, uh, everybody wants to be green in a day, but you don't have to. That's the key. I think every professional trader has been doing this for a very, very long time. They understand that. Yeah, it's cool. To, you know, it's great to be green on the day, but again, do you really need to be green on the day today? Again, you can make it back today and tomorrow and the next day or whatever the case may be. So it wasn't the point for me, I need to get green, I need to get green. It was more the point for me, well, let me see where my next value is. So I think I shorted Netflix. I believe I shorted Netflix and it did exactly the same thing. It started going down a dollar and usually what I do, you know, I get a little smarter, at least not, at least not dumber throughout the day. Um, I say to myself, well, let me just put in a break even as my stop, worst case scenario, I get stopped out. Before I even click the mouse, the stock was already a dollar and a half against me. So this is going basically 75, 80, 90 cents, but it was in my favor. And I literally was just, just about to type, you know, a little click in the order and the stock is already a dollar and a half against me. So you could see how incredibly scary it was. So normally for, for Netflix to get a two and a half dollar move, either some crazy headlines are gonna come out um, or well, some crazy headlines come out. You're not gonna have a two and a half dollar move within 15 seconds, it's just not gonna happen. But that's what was going on. So I lost more money, right? I lost more money on Netflix. And I forgot what else I traded on Monday, but I had also like a dollar profit in it and I wanted the breaking even. So at least the third trade on Monday, I turned around and said, well, at least, you know, let me use break even as my stop. But it was, I've, and I've never seen a day like this in about a decade. And it was so scary because again, the market structure was completely gone. Uh, number two, I wasn't in control. And number three, well, you, it's one of those days that you could turn into a loss, into a, uh, a really a big kind of a big deal if you don't have the mental makeup for it and try to make it back make it back on a day that you are literally holding a 2-9 offsuit playing against aces and that's what the market had that's exactly what the market had on on monday was aces and i was sitting there with a 2-9 offsuit keep on betting the pot betting the pot so eventually on monday i just stopped trading i was like listen this is just and it kind of happened the rest of the day you could see it. even though i didn't put on any more trades throughout the day i could see it just happening over and over again so by Tuesday, when, when Tuesday ran, it came along, it was kind of the same thing. But by then I was trading a lot more tighter. So I put on three positions. I made money in two of them. And I think I broke even or made, made a little bit of money in the third one. But then I started getting smarter and smarter that maybe just something is wrong. Like something is really, really wrong. And the most ironic part of the week for me at least was if you look at the final scoreboard, right? If you look at what the Dow did, the S&P and the Qs, they were only down like, I think one or 2% each. I think the NASDAQ was even down less than 1%, right? But it felt like we were down, not necessarily even down, it felt like we went through like 25, 30% worth of ranges in individual days. Matter of fact, when Wednesday rolled along, and this is why I finally, it's finally, you know, hit me in my head because I'm like, you know, dumber than a bag of rocks. Hey man, just scalp, whatever it is. 50 cents, a dollar, 75 cents. You, you're not going to be able to scale out. You can't. The market structure is not there. You got 100 share lots with a dollar spread. How are you going to get out of your trade in thirds? So by, by Wednesday, it really dawned on me, you know what? This is not a time to you know, try to make money. This is a time to you know, go into survival mode, right? 
break even is your best trade, like your absolute best trade. And just keep on taking money off, you know, keep on taking money off 50 cents, 70 cents, a dollar, whatever it is, just keep on taking money off. And that was kind of the, you know, that was kind of the, the setting, the tone for the rest of the week. And on Wednesday, if you guys remember, this was, I mean, one of the craziest days I can remember. We had the Dow going from up 350 to down 200 to up 150 to close down 50. Okay. Only to open up the next day. Crazy, absolutely crazy. But at, at that point, by, by Wednesday, I got smarter and I just said, you know what? I'm just going to scalp Thursday and Friday. I made some money back on Thursday and Friday. But I, I, I tell you, this was absolutely the most bananas week. So if you're a new trader and you started out in the first two years, right? In the last two years, and you, you're just getting your feet wet, right? You're just getting uh, your beak wet. You know, you're still going through the fine point of trying just to understand the nuances, what the market's all about. You can't possibly feel discouraged because again, I saw many of traders, okay? Many of traders never make it in a bull market. So when you have, when you're facing a market like this, and I'm telling you, okay? And again, you, again, I'm not trading 20 weeks, I'm trading nearly 20 years. And I'm telling you, this is the most aggressive market I've, I've at least the first couple of days I've seen in the last decade. It should really be, like horns should be going out, right? And there's something that I say all the time that is, um, pe people say this a lot of time on, on social media, you gotta sit on your hands, which I think is a cop out for lack of prog uh, process, okay? It just basically says to me, at least personally, that hey, I don't have a process to make money on, on the other side. But there's a difference between sitting on your hands and sitting, and sitting aside, okay? And here's a perfect example, when you have a market structure that is breaking down before your eyes, that's a great way to get killed. Not even lose money, but killed. Those type of markets, you kind of want to sit aside, at least for the day, right? At least for the day, sit aside and see what happens. Um, and that's not having lack of process. That's being an adult, right? That's being an adult that's taking responsibility. It's a mature move, okay? So for example, Andrew, and again, I don't want to embarrass him in the room, but Andrew set out the, 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 you know, the session of Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. He set out three days. And he's a very aggressive trader. And by Thursday, he was shorting Amazon into levels we'll talk about in a second. And then Friday, I think he caught like 40 points on Amazon from that, uh, from that breakdown. So sitting on hands, I think, is a crutch. You know, sitting sometimes to the side, I think is a very mature thing to do. It all depends on market conditions. But what we saw was an absolute... Uh, incredible, incredible market uh, this week. Not in a good way, but an absolute incredible market uh, this week. Um, I personally think if you're a newer trader, okay, and you struggled with the bull market, you have no, you have no place uh, in, you know, in an environment like this. You should even just don't even think about allocating capital. There are no breakouts, okay. I'm telling you this right now. Anybody who's talking about breakouts on social media, I don't know what market you're looking. I really don't. Okay. Stocks go up for 45 seconds and then they crash for three and a half hours. Okay. There's no such thing as a breakout. Okay. There are no daily charts. Everything has technical damage. So if you are, if you trade based on daily charts, okay, you, there, there's no reason for you to allocate money. I'm telling you this as the day is long, especially if you're a new trader. Okay. I, I think the only way to survive right now is either sitting on the sidelines in given days. I'm not saying for the whole week in given days. Okay. Or you got to trade channels. Okay. You got to trade channels. You got to trade them with smaller size, use max pain and keep on taking cash flow. I mean, really, really keep on taking cash flow. And a lot of times what we saw, especially like Thursday and Friday, I would get moves on like Tesla. It, it would, I would have to fight for a dollar in Tesla. As much as the volatility we saw, I had to fight for a dollar. Okay, and, and I had like two, three consecutive trades on Tesla. It would go up like 60, 70, 80 a dollar and then come right back in. Go up to 50, 60, 70 cents a dollar, come right back in. And again, if I didn't use, if I didn't take any money off, and I know it sounds crazy sometimes taking 50 cents a dollar on Tesla, but if that's what the market's giving you, how do you not take it, right? How do you not take it? And I, and I, say, this in, I say this all the time in the live webinar, may your worst trade, right? May your absolute worst trade be a profitable one. So if you make literally 10 bucks on the trades, 10 bucks more than you had, okay? So, and the most ironic part is if you didn't use break even on the balance of your trade, okay? These stocks were going down, not, they weren't going down 50 cents, they were going down three, four, five dollars. So you you have to be 
uh, you know, you have to be really in tune with the market is giving you. Again, every single week, the market gives you a new personality, sets a different tone. But again, the game plan is still the same. You have to lead with your shield. You can't lead with your chin. And that's the only way to survive. So going into this week, I'm in literally scalp mode. Okay, whatever I started doing on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I'm in scalp mode. Okay, uh, I think if you're an options player, and I think a lot of people in a live webinar uh, do trade uh, these pivots based on options, you do have a little bit of an advantage, actually a lot of advantages. If you're giving yourself enough time um, in the trade, okay, not, not the weekly stuff, I'm talking about if you're giving yourself enough time in the trade, okay, and you're, you're making a bet where the measured potential move will be, okay, I think you have a much better advantage. So we were talking about, for example, on Friday, uh, Amazon. And, and, and by the way, the, the one thing that I did get kind of encouraged by, kind of by Thursday, was a little bit of the market structure coming back, okay? Um, I made back money on Thursday and I made back some more money on, uh, on Friday, but what I liked, what I least saw was structure, okay? When the pivot pivoted, okay, it either, did what it had to do. And again, it doesn't make a difference how big the move was. At least it made the move. And at least you could protect your balance by using break even. So we did see that. And the one thing that we always talk about in the live webinar as being a trader is you have to adapt. Okay, you have to adapt. So what we started doing on Friday was we started talking about making sales into supply, literally short selling into supply. Now, again, it's nothing, anything. It's, it's not anything new. OK, because we were just structured as breaking down of the pivots, breaking out uh, of the channels. But in this type of environment to kind of curb the really aggressive volatility at times, you do have to make the most prudent bets and, and selling stocks into the channels. Again, again, this is a perfect example. If you notice the cues and this is just from a daily chart, but you could kind of interpret that into um, the 60 minute supply. Uh, every time it hits supply, it goes back down. Every time it hits supply, it goes back down. So that's what we try to uh, to really do on Friday. And if you look at the pivots on Friday, they were actually pretty good. Okay, they were actually pretty good. Um, so let's talk about them. Let's talk about them uh, very very quickly. Um, here is one that that they went down. Here's a a level on Tesla. Again, I I trade Tesla back and forth, back and forth. Here is a perfect example on Friday. I couldn't take this trade. Okay, I couldn't take the 7280 breakdown. And why is that? If you guys remember, Tesla, when Tesla started building, it started building 85 cent wide and there was 100 share lots. Okay, and there were buyers on the bottom of the channel and there was size. There was size to hit bids. But the problem is if there are reload buyers on the bottom and it's an 80 cent wide, right, with 100 share lots, you hit these guys and they're real buyers. They're going to come right back for you. You're going to be down a dollar and a half, two dollars, three dollars in the trading. It's going to exactly happen. The same thing happens. Uh, the same thing would happen with me that happened on Monday. So I couldn't get involved in the trade. And when you look at Tesla, and again, this is where I always say, you know, it doesn't make a difference how who is in the trade with you. Either either gonna, it's either going to work or it's not going to work. That's what's so great about the organic pivots. Uh, once this thing started breaking, uh, once this thing started breaking right here, this uh, 82, 80 pivot, I mean, just... It went straight down to 70, hung around, hung around, hung around, and just got just absolutely demolished. So unfortunately, I couldn't participate in this trade. Uh, here's where you know things got really uh, aggressive. Uh, again, congratulations. You got this nice move here. Uh, Boeing, uh, 321.50, sneaky pivot. If it builds, uh, it can flush. Uh, if you look at Boeing, and again, uh, you know, here's a 60-minute view on Boeing. Here's why we talk about the... Uh, 321, uh, 321 right here is a pre-market low, 321.50, uh, just got just shelled, um, really, really hit here. Uh, Netflix towards the end of the day, this was this was a big one right here. If you look at 269.80 is the line in the sand. If it builds below, it could flush. Um, Netflix right over here. Yeah, so 269.80 right here. Here's the low of 269.80 was the pre-market low, and that was why the pivot uh, once it started breaking down, you know, went all the way down to 65. Um, this was huge. Uh, congratulations to, to my brother, Andrew. Uh, I think he caught like 40 points on the trade. Uh, Amazon, 1632 line in the sand. If it builds, it should flush more. Uh, and look at Amazon. I mean, just, this, this thing got really just just killed. I mean, really, really killed. So here's 1630. Uh, excuse me. Here was 1632, right? Here's 1632. 
And once it started building below, it just got, you know, just got smashed, went down to 1585. Uh, so I was definitely encouraged by, um, I was absolutely encouraged by at least the structure coming back Thursday and Friday. So obviously tomorrow I'm not going to be all gun blazing. Oh, it's Monday. Is it Monday yet? Seriously, enough with that. Um, so I, I will be patient in the first at least half hour. Okay. I want to see how. Uh, everything plays out. Obviously, okay, can we say it? Can we, can we enough with the market pause and all that stuff? We're going long. I mean, the market's a bear market, okay? The market's a bear market. Again, if people use the word pause and correction like it's it's all, you can't use it. Just, it's we're in a bear market. So if you look at a lot of daily setups, we're getting a lot of really good looks for tomorrow, okay? We really are. Um, and if the market doesn't, uh, if the market gaps up tomorrow, which would be phenomenal because uh, I'm flat, if the market gaps up tomorrow, we really have a lot of really good setups for the week. And let's talk about them, okay, guys? Let's talk about some setups for the week. Uh, again, from the macro side, uh, again, if you're an options player, okay, and you want to eliminate some volatility, the recent lows, if you believe we continue selling uh, into the end of the year, into the first quarter, the lows on the Qs are 157, okay? They're 157, uh, we close at 161. Nobody's saying take the weeklies, but if you're gonna take a macro shot, okay, a macro bet, you might wanna take a look at, you know, maybe the Februarys, right? Maybe the February uh, puts the 157s. I mean, that's your measured move, right? That's your measured move. Uh, on the day trading side, when you look at the Qs, uh, if they gap up, you know, we're obviously looking uh, at a breakdown below 160.60 for continuation of downward bias. And then, you know, I, I like a lot of semiconductors. I really do. Uh, NVIDIA, NVIDIA looks like it wants to, it wants to dance. Okay. I, I, I think it wants to dance. Uh, look how many candles in a row, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six days in a row. The low of this candle here, right? The low of this base here is 144.80. Okay, if this thing starts building below 144.80, especially if you're an options player, look at the low, right? Look at the low here, guys, 133. Okay, you have from 145, basically, the 143, you could see the measure potential. So if you're an options player, again, maybe give yourself a month, two months of time. It's, again, if this bear market accelerates, this is a good macro bet, so keep an eye on it. Uh, look at Amazon, right? Amazon's going lower. Okay, look, look at the bottom range on Amazon. You got 1476. Okay, 14. Again, nobody's saying they get to 1476 tomorrow. Is it possible? Anything's possible in this market. But look at the structure here, guys. Look at see, you got 1590 is low here. Friday went to 1585, and this is the lowest close in this whole formation. So this thing starts building back below 1585, right? Again, if you're a macro, especially options player, Look how much room you have, 1476. 1476 is the daily Bollinger Band. It's not even the low. The low is 1420 from, from November the 20th. So look how much room you have. So keep an eye on that. Let me give you guys some other um, some other ideas uh, that I do like for uh, Monday. I have a lot of semiconductors. Um, yeah, I have a lot of semiconductors to watch. Um, I like Maxim on the short. I mean, these are all shorts. Um, I like Maxim. Um, I think if Maxim starts building below this uh, 5240, would be uh, with the, the bears would really reclaim uh, the, 50, the 50 day moving average. You start going between 50, 5250, excuse me, 5240, you could get a move down to 51. And again, if the bear market really starts to accelerate, again, look how much room you have, right? You have $46 uh, as the lows of October the 24th. Um, look at Clack, right? Look at Clack as well. Clock is breaking down. Okay, this is the lowest close in this whole formation. Uh, if the mark, if if it gaps up, if it gaps on, on uh, up on Monday, uh, green to red short. It's basically a green to red short. And if this thing starts escalating, uh, you have room all the way down to like eighty four. So you're talking about five dollar range in this thing. And if this thing holds Friday's low, I mean, what are you risking? Thirty cents on the trade. You could you could enter it multiple times, and it's still it's still gonna be a paper cut. So. Um, you know, this is definitely, definitely worth watching a $5 risk for like a 30, 50 cent, uh, $5 reward for a possible 30, 50 cent risk, uh, depending how the channel is set up for Monday, but keep an eye on that. Um, AMD, AMD looks lower. Um, you know, the darling for most of this year, you know, it looks like it's going to go lower. I mean, here's, it's hugging support here. Uh, if they could just start building below this like 19, 15, 19 area, it should get down, right? It should get down to this bottom channel here of 1820s, maybe even to 1740s uh, if it gets extended. Um, I like Win. Uh, look at Win. 
Look at wind as well. Uh, you know, wind starts building below this. Um, I, I think if wind starts building below this 104, I uh, should get down to this 102, maybe even get stretched down to 100. And J and J, man. I mean, if you guys really read that news yesterday, if I mean that's some crazy. Listen, you, you guys know me. I'm a parent. Uh, I love my children more than anything. This news sounds bad, man. I mean, this sounds this sounds really really bad. I know I know a couple of houses uh, defended them. Okay, they defended uh, Johnson and Johnson, but I'm telling you, the day is long. There was some we saw some option bets. I think uh, down to like 115. If this thing starts reclaiming, if the bears start reclaiming this like 131.80, right? Check this out, right? Here's a candle right here. Here's a sneaky candle right here. You don't need to go away to the lows. So if Johnson & Johnson starts reclaiming down this 131.80, which will also be, the bears will reclaim the 200-day moving average, you can get a move right back down to 130. And if that breaks, this thing could go down to like 127. So for you option players, definitely get your uh, ducks in a row. So New week, guys. We got to see what's what's happening. Hopefully, the structure will be a lot similar for the first two months of this breakdown uh, than the first two days of the week. Uh, again, if you're a new trader, stay out. It's not for you. Stay out. Watch the market every single day. Watch the order flow. Watch the level two. Watch the circumstances. Watch you know. Watch all the activity. These are these are priceless times in your developmental career. Okay, they really are. Uh, you can't get this back. You can't just turn off your machine and says it doesn't make a difference. I'm not trading. Every day that you're watching screen time, you're getting much more valuable information that you wouldn't have had. It's only going to benefit you, benefit you in the longer term. It always is. And the most important part is getting as much information as possible. So when the circumstances comes back down the road, you're not going to be shocked. Okay, guys. So new week. Let's stay nice and calm, everybody. It's the holiday season. Let's look at the big picture. Um, and again, very, very important week. Again, I think the Bears, they're in control right now. Let's see if they could, could extend, their, um, st extend their stances. And let's see what we have. Again, remember, guys, adversity makes, you know, makes people stronger. Okay? Whatever doesn't kill you will make you stronger. At tough times, they don't last. Right? Tough people do. Like all these three right? It's, 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 it's that, that was the last, uh, the last three things I said was like the social media, um, you know, the social media, ho holy grail. It's all these motivational. <laughs> Have a great weekend guys. I'll see you all in the field on Monday. Take care guys. Have a great weekend.